What's up, Lana? Stunned speechless by my awesome, I see. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Eh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping for the best. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals! Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. Well, to be fair, sometimes people that, you know, people that hate other people will go to their funeral to be all happy about it. Those people are called psychopaths, but that's besides the point. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Miss Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh! Oh ho! Oh ho ho! <laughs> you mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. High noon! Because of a cowboy. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. And read them I shall! I can't believe you, the Chief Prosecutor, were a witness in that case. Oh, there's some info. Miss Sky was a witness? Alright. Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murders. Oh what, now that I've brought your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? It's Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? What? My name's in there? I don't know, unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SL9 incident, is that? That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark killings. The what the... Joe Dark... Oh. No, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma, wait! She ran away. Uh... You know what? I just remembered I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Boop, boop, boop. Damon Gant, my... Okay, hang on a second. Can I actually, like, read these things? Is this something I'm allowed to do? Okay, incident number SL9. Closed. Criminal Joe Dark. Crime. Serial murder. Sentence. Death. Victims. Edward Jones. Jason Knight. Edith Kirby. Rachel Moss. Jeb Bates. Neil Marsh... Marshall? Neil Marshall. Head prosecutor... Miles Edgeworth, Witness, Lana Sky, and Emma Sky. What? In Executive Investigators, Damon Gant, and Lana Sky, Head Investigation, Bruce Goodman, Investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Jake. You think that's a coincidence? Uh, Jake Marshall, Victim Neil Marshall? That's certainly a fine kettle of fish. Okay. I'm not sure what that's all about, but at least we finally got the game caught up with me on the whole everybody being involved with the case two years ago and this one at the same time. It's obviously pretty important. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I'd better take a good look at this file. I scanned it with all of my eyes. To be continued, yeah. And by, if by continued you mean keep going because we're gonna do it right now, the answer is yes. So let's go already. Which cow? All right, back to the court. Some major information has flailed all over the dang place. And I need to direct it directly at somebody's face so that they may see the truth. I'm sure somebody understood what that meant. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. But why? Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. 
The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Cowboy McGraw drinking again on the... That's hardly a reliable testimony from a drunk man. Witness, please state your name and occupation. No, I'm too busy being horrible at my job. Oh, wait. Me, partner. Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. No, I'm an alcoholic. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind call it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Ha! Ha! I see what he did there. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. Mr. Howling wind, you were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. Also, he has a very large knife. I feel like that's something he probably shouldn't have. What do you mean? A desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In English! <laughs> day of the crime. Well, I was having myself a hootin' nanny. Never mind. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. So I, you know, gross incompetence. Probably should be fired. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I see. You refuse to do your job. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Okay. It's one thing to be a big old stinky liar face about all the things that are stinky and lies, but now you're dissing that guy's beard? As a fellow beard aficionado, I've got to say, to hell with you and everything you stand for. All right, then. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. Wait, help. The security s cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprints that activated locks inside the evidence room? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines. Or with following orders, as it seems. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? He prefers to be known as the Howling Wind. This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Okay, then. Guess I gotta, like, press for information and what have you. On the bone orchard. All right, fine. What you got to say? How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's so still, even time dies in there. That's just a caretaker who inherited the recordings. You inherited them. Videos of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. I guess that way they don't have to buy, you know, more tapes and just have a bunch of, you know, empty tapes. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. Just keep on pressing stuff. We're going to get some info. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I have gross negligence of my work. I am unsuited for my line of, of profession, and I drink heavily. Clearly, I am an unreliable source and generally an obnoxious individual. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I knows lets rules get in his way. No desperados I know join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. What with me not caring about my job and y'all. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner, can't say I do, despite the fact that this is all one huge fabricated lie, because I'm totally the one in that trench coat. <gasps> Whew, right, keep running out of air. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Thank you! Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway, except it's protected by three. You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism. 
Sorry, partner, I ain't good with machines. What do I look like? Some kind of purple bandana wearing turtle? I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible, actually. The sensors on the lock handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence, what with them being bad at their jobs and everything. I mean, they're detectives. You'd think they'd be able to pick up on keen, subtle details on things. I don't need to mention it. Detective Gumshoe said something like that, too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? Oh, well, you see, I was way the ever-loving hell away from there doing something else. Mm-hmm. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even Angel's Steak Lunches can beat the parlor's Van Gogh Spaghetti Pasta. Do you mean to tell us you abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this was at least taught. This has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says, "Did you not want to raise this year?" <laughs> uh, except I somehow doubt this all. Out of ammo, Officer Marshall. That's right, partner, or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you'd better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Huh. One thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. Apparently, your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. Okay, so I need to apply some form of evidence onto some form of thing. Okay... Maybe... I... I'm not entirely sure what... Uh, like the ante... You know what, whatever. I don't really know if this is the correct time to use this, but whatever. It, it kind of proves that you were there. And that it was covered in friggin' blood. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. Okay. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. <laughs> Listen, real good, partner. I refuse to acknowledge any accusations on your side. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects, that is. Make my rounds about eh, once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. Yeah, except, uh, are they usually covered in blood? I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Kind of a big deal. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however. A luminal test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall! It seems to me... There ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. Well, mostly just you, but okay. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall? About the blood-stained fingerprints. Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints found at the scene of the crime. And it better be good. With less obvious lies. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the blood-stained handprint. The murderer touched the locker with my fingerprint was but the, the murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. Look how schmarmy, warmy, garmy, slarmy I be. My goodness gracious. All right, fine. Hmm. The witness expl explanation appears valid, although extraordinarily stupid. Although there's room for doubt. Thank you, judge. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it deep down in my hair spikes. Now's my chance to prove it. I'm gonna press you for the info. So let's get pressed for info. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in the evidence room. Or is that so? Mm hmm? That's because you, how did you put it? Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. I mean what I said and I said what I meant. Oh wait! Oh well hell that well hell's bells, now the cloth is really going to be Yeah! You shoved something in there! 
And you weren't very good at it. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never changed. He must have been using the fingerprint lock without even knowing it. Okay. We've got ourselves an updated thingamabob. One of them just so happened to be at the same place. That still seems rather contrived, all things considered. Alright, so then, what about the bloody handprint? It wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It's just so happened. Aha. Uh -huh. The murderer touched the... I, st I find that hard to believe, though. And rather stupid. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Did you just use the no you defense? Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward for me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? Yeah, actually. <sighs> How are they unrelated? Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Yes, 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 I... Okay, fine. Yeah. Come on, start talking. How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried we uh, tried that lock that too. Huh, so that would mean... Well, hang on a second, is he wearing the same... Maybe he was only wearing a glove on one hand and the other glove was used to keep a lo locked safe open. Eh? The murderer, wearing gloves, happened to place his hand on the top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood... In the desert, it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. Oh, so you want me to point out the fact that you had to open your... your locker to shove something in there? Hmm? 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 This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. You bet it wasn't me in that video, right, Barner? Except it was, you unbelievable fool! What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? Well, I mean, yeah. If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. Okay. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. So many things. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, he could leave the room without being caught on tape. You know, maybe somebody who works there. Oh, now what do you want, Sir Nerds a lot? We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so. I have evidence. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Yeah, 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 Mr. Smugs a lot. Shut up. Now then, let's have another look at that video. Show us this incriminating evidence. All right, fine. I stinking will. Okay, just got the. There we go. Fast forward. I was rewinding. Not what I wanted. Keep it going. The thing goes, and then there goes the Meekins. He's all. What the hell? What the hell? And then he's all passed out. Blit. And then. As sure as sundown, y'all left a telltale sign of your no good banditoiness. I'm not good with metaphors. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. These days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Yeah, sure. Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight! Ha ha! Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. <laughs> the key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. The one that you said was yours. 
the locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. And just rewind space time. Granted, I didn't, I'm pretty sure I didn't know that that was your locker ahead of time, but it, I mean, I, it had to have been yours. Otherwise my entire, you know, argument would have been completely, you know, moot. So it kind of had to be yours by default. So uh, thanks for admitting that, by the way. The white cloth, it's gone. What's the meaning of this officer marshal? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Bum ba da bum. Order, order. It would seem that that's all. Hold your horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. Okay, how are you gonna wiggle your way out of this? So what if my locker was opened? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. <laughs> the murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. I think everyone, like, everyone in the room is like, seriously, dude? Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? Y'all, not too bright. This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh, yeah? I call your bluff. You say open that locker? Now prove it! Um... With... 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 With your... with your fingerprints? You can talk the talk, alright, but you got a long ways to go before you can walk the walk. What? What? Um... okay... Oh wait, so hang on a second. Uh, ba ba ba. So wait, just the the lockers in general, maybe. Uh, fingerprint sensor. Indeed, indeed. Let's all just forget that first mistake. <laughs> we talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What, what kind of crazy talk is this? Um, a modern age, I guess. Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. Flashback. And in case the locks aren't that obvious, there's even some people in the force that don't know about them. Ain't that crazy croc? Crazy croc talk. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Where'd you get that jerky? I only got one word for you, partner. No! It was a very long word, but yeah, okay. Order, order, order! Witness, explain yourself! If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. And as a struggling comedian, I would know this. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of this crime. Ah, uh, but jerky. Olay! Please answer the question! What is he now, a bullfighter? That's alright, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans, why don't you? There's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right, the only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. The simple fact of the matter is that the quote-unquote victim was in actuality the witness. The doctor was his mother. Officer Marshall was standing right here. There, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was! Nay, I say! Correct! Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman! I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall! It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman! But that's p p p p p p preposterous! Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene! Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure! We've established that he's really stupid! I po May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. Flashback. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did he respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. dun da 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 Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. Eh? Huh? As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized that man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? Eh, jerky. 
You've got quite an imagination, partner. You got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Huh. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard. Would you stop bringing up the beard, you beard-hating simpleton? Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence? Any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the, de the desert heat. Ack! This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Herf! Herf, I say! It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. Aw, why you gotta be all like that? I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. Edgeworth ran into walls? The basics. Um, for me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Nick, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at that time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it had been, as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as a Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that, yes. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So... Just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps, perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Heyo! Very well, let's take yet another look at the security tape. Okay. There's that dancing badgerman. What is the cloth and why did he hide it? We've already talked about the thing, so I just gotta look. Reason he would be hiding a piece of cloth. He got spooked. He got grabbed. Whoa! Hang on a second! He got grabbed with the bloody hand! So he stuffed the coat in there! How about that noise?! For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room. I don't know what that reason was, yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. You were attacked by a Meekins. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat? You couldn't just walk out like that, so you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, huh, partner? So, are you gonna stop denying literally everything? Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all, as does just about everybody who dares go up against the un inquisitive might known as Phoenix Wright. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Eh, two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. All right. Seems the time has come. Okay, I wasn't really expecting this to be a testimony, but all right. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. So the supposed victim was really you, basically. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Large quantities of blood traces were found on the floor of the evidence room. 
If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It looked like too much blood for that. Marshall's confession. Okay, so I guess now I just gotta examine the hell out of it. Okay. You couldn't let what die? When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to com uh, it was going to completely end with end with the transferal that day. Glasses need them. Now, if I had anything to do with it, the incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only the detective who was in charge of it can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time, no matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? Um, I have a theory. That day was my last chance. That's why I did what needed to done be done and done did what I did. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transferal, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out the lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor office's parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you meant to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Although you can sand them off. Normally, that locker shouldn't have opened. So it opened because a rubber glove was stuck in the door by chance? Then, Detective Goodman must have been have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. Interesting. That's true, you definitely did. So, you stole evidence and you assaulted an officer. You may not have committed murder, but you definitely done did something. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. You only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. There it is. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry it had to turn out that way, with me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Huh. So, what happened next? Okay, I assumed you used the, the switchy blade that was... part of it. Yeah. And managed to escape... B -b 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 just pressing for info, pressing for info! So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would be make much difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you blooded your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, that jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone can read my brain. So what you're saying is on that day, dun, 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 there was no murder at that place at that time. Very well, but the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no I didn't. But why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, your honor. So wait, then that means somebody was... Somebody took the stuff out of the locker before you even went in! Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Somebody else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are even a valid solution. <laughs> like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. 
and I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Huh. The witness had an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? I have a theory, but it'd be nice if you just straight up told us. But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for those crimes. One thing I can say for sure, he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I better take another look at the files. Okay then, I only have one possible idea. Hopefully I'm able to actually point out the specifics. Otherwise this is gonna look really silly. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. You lost somebody, didn't you? Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall. Are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. Whoa, hello, what's that? He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, chief detective at the time. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark, uh, fought Drake and was killed. Or Dark. <laughs> that was the first time that Dark would left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason read for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Interesting. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Huh, yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. Uh, that's... not good news for me. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So, if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which, in turn, means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. I say nay! But but wait a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we examine the incident at the police department today. But! There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got the draw on you, partner. All the mysteries at the police department have been uncovered. No contradictions. Remain. Oh, sorry, run off sentence. The murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Sky. There were no errors in the testimony of the witness, Angel Star. If you have a response, make it one word or less. 
God! Y'all an ass wipe, you know that? It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize... That would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Oh, please don't. Hey, oh, somebody! Emma? Your Honor, wait! Emma? The defense has an objection! A scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? I'm not entirely sure how to answer that question. Your Honor, uh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Thank you, Edgeworth. I, I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. So, did you find something? Also, wow, you're a fast runner. Um, no. Eh. Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them, Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone could save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um. It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of any more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y y yes, Your Honor. If I ever needed to concentrate, it's now. Oh boy, call me, or call me Orange Juice, because I'm concentrating. What could be wrong with the handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Well, I can't say there's no problem. Kind of a, kind of a no-answer situation here. The handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. I hope he knows. The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that when drawn will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can be can prove something is missing from the floor plans? I, I'm thinking. Just, 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 just give me a second, okay? I'm thinking about this. I have something that proves that the bloody handprint is off. Is it possible for me to look at the security video? Okay.
It's just the, the, the locker with the handprint is being covered up by the badger's head. So, all I can think of is the badger? What about that piece of plywood? The blue badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright, please do. Because I'm grasping. Please look at the floor plans of the scene cr crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So, watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Oh! Well, what? Gasp! That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? So that means... Just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Also, you're over here now. Emma, on that afternoon... Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment, I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom. Wow, kudos on using balderdash correctly in a sentence. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, Blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. Where an actual murder was taking place, and then they transported the, the, the body over there. Yes, my theory, my theory might be right. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on the tape. If I- if it, it had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered! That's ridiculous! I refute you! Okay, well then I refute your refutal! The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker! So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves it occurred! When did the first incident occur? I do have evidence for that! To surmise, the defense claims that... Prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was disguised as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in the evidence room. The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us! When did this first incident occur? Proof must be presented! Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? I have said evidence in my pants right this moment! Wasabadam! If the time, if the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the perpetrator would have had entered the room in order to do so. An ID card is required. An ID card. Oh, the ID card record. Bum ba da bum. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 4:50. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4:40 p.m. Ah, ah. Miss Miles Edgeworth. Just what have you done? I never figured you had nerve, boy. Put off the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Huh. Nope, I ain't getting it. Huh. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have just been... Yeah, I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's un physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. Okay, well, who's Mr. Super 7? The only... And that's the one without a name! Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. 
That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with Super 7. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this asap alike. Find out what I, whose ID number is 777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777